You're about to gain valuable insights into how to accelerate your journey from the current as-is state to the desired to-be state. With much more, please welcome Chet Harter. If you think this is going to be an SAP sales pitch, it is not going to be that, all right? I'm not in sales. I, uh, on, th on, on Tuesday this week, we did this event in New York, and somebody just before I went up on stage said, you look like a sales guy. And I said, that's because I'm wearing my sales costume. But I am not part of the sales organization. I'm part of the center of excellence, all right? That means I'm not in sales. It means I spend my time working with our customers and prospects to inform them of what SAP solutions do. And I've been doing this for almost 20 years. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about myself for a moment. It's great to be here. And yes, that might mean I mean I'm happy to be in front of all of you. But it, and it does mean that. But I have spent a lot of time over the years in the software industry in Palo Alto, which is not downtown San Francisco. And so to do something in downtown San Francisco is kind of thrilling for this you know, guy from a small town in the Midwest. All right, so this morning I, I, I throw up open the curtains and I look out there and from my room on the 34th floor, I can see Alcatraz, you know, and I can see the Golden Gate Bridge, which is red. And as I'm standing there, I'm looking down on the city and I can see birds down there trying to make a living, doing what birds do. And then I see a single bird fly across the sky above all the buildings of San Francisco. And it just keeps flying, it keeps going, I think. Now, where the heck is that bird going? Did it wake up this morning and go, ah, oh, Thursday, I got to get across town today. What could possibly be motivating that bird to, to do what it's doing? But I, I, I digress. Okay, so <laughs> SAP Signavio, the secret of successful transformations. Okay, now I don't necessarily think this is a secret. I think this is something that people have been doing for a very long time. I think this is an opportunity, however, to possibly do things better, all right? So in the, in the, there's a huge clue here. Unleash the combined power of business and IT. The, the idea, business-led transformations, okay? And it's also implying that there's a disconnect. A disconnect between the IT organization and the business organization. Now, some of you right now might be saying, no, I don't think that's really a problem for us. And others in the room might be saying, oh no, that, that is an issue we could certainly stay on to improve there. So I, uh, a couple months ago, we did have a uh, enterprise architect event for our user group, our North American user group, which I attended. And I was talking with a few of our customers. And one in particular was telling me the story. He said, the thing is, we know that there are areas to improve upon. We know there are things we have to do. We hear about them. We also hear a lot of complaints from our users. They don't like this. They don't like that. And so we do what we can to work with them to make improvements but sometimes it's really hard to get the users to participate. It's really difficult to get them to, to drop their, their, their normal day-to-day -day jobs and, and help us with that. And so what we do is we, we, we focus a lot of our efforts on these improvements. We do what we think is best. We do what we think is the right thing for the company. And in the end, the, 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 the business users will say, well, that's, it's better than it was, but it's really not what we were looking for. And it doesn't really do this. And we were kind of hoping it was going to do this better. There's that disconnect. And so no matter what you do, there's going to be complaints anyway. And, and sure, did you try to get them involved? Yes, you did, but they don't always, you know, for whatever, for multiple reasons, they don't always do that. And that's what we're talking about today is how do we improve that interaction between the business users and the IT organization? So this is the screen I use to hypnotize the audience so that whatever I say, you go, okay. But SAP Signavio is... SAP's solution suite for business process management. It, and, and just before you get turned off by that, whether you're an SAP customer or not an SAP customer, it's okay either way. This is, this was, these were systems that were developed. And while we do certainly have some, specifics, uh, some specific SAP capabilities, it's made for any type of environment. For, for one thing, mo of many SAP customers have more than just an SAP environment. They have lots of other applications as well. And because we do want to talk about end-to-end -end processes, we had to take into consideration that there are far more systems out there than just SAP systems, okay? So if you're in a, not in an SAP environment, this still, this still applies, okay? But a key thing to this whole thing is change management. How does your organization 
manage change. And we've been hearing about the need for change for so many, for decades. I mean, my, you know what, since, you know, I, I entered the workforce in 1937. And I remember even then people talking about how we need to manage, manage change. The thing that's happening, however, is that, and, and no, no news here, no shocker here, the rate of changes has, has been going up. And with the, with the invention of new innovations, new technologies, there's always these, these new opportunities to make some dramatic improvements on, our, on how, we, how we achieve our, the profitability goals that we want, how do we hire our employees, how do we retain those employees, how do we attract new customers. There's always new things coming up. But yet, companies say, you know, and we all know, People resist change. They don't want to change. They resist the change. They avoid the change. They fight the change. And here's the thing, okay? So you think about that. We all agree that change is necessary, but yet we're going to do everything we can to keep it from happening. Almost so, so here's kind of a key point. Why not make change management a core competency? If we know that we have to, in order for our company to survive, we need to be able to manage our change. So why not invest in, in in a change management approach. And that means hiring people who understand change management, have done it before and understand what it takes to do it and to do it, to do it well. And make sure those people have the tools they need. And that's where we are today in, in the world of Signavia with the dig digital tools that we have. Give those people the tools they need to do a good job and also make sure they have the high quality data so they can make intelligent decisions. So they, for example, so that the IT people know that what they're working on is, is the most important the, the highest priority stuff for the whole company. So you're not wasting your time. It's tied into what the business is trying to achieve. So once again, the key point there, why not make change management a core competency? And by the way, you do, I, over the last two years, you know, the, the Signavio organization within SAP has only existed for two years. Signavio was an acquisition. Signavio itself is 10 years old or whatever, or, or older. We acquired them two years ago, all right? So anyway. Change management, what this, is, what this is about. You might say this is an enterprise architect, and as you can tell, she's perplexed, she's tired, she's frustrated with something, all right? What could it be? And first of all, she doesn't even know she has a camera on her, okay? So I'm just gonna stop the camera right there. But I'm not gonna read these to you. Thank you, Paul. I'm not gonna read these to you, but what it reflects is that disconnect. The fact that we, we might have an IT strategy and we hope that is tied into the business strategy. And on a day-to-day -day basis, we're working, the business is working on projects to improve and the IT organization is working on projects to improve. And the last one down at the bottom, where do I focus my efforts to make sure I'm taking care of today and also keep my eye on where we're going in the future? How do I keep my eye on where we're going in the future if I don't have visibility of that? Okay, very difficult. And up here in the, in the upper, upper right, How do I stay on top of issues that jeopardize corporate performance and security? In other words, how do I just stay on top of it? I don't want to rely on people to tell me what's going on. I want to be able to monitor it myself and be able to notice. I want to be aware of the problem. I want to be able to assess the magnitude of the problem so I can make, once again, intelligent decisions about where to deploy my scarce resources, the people I have. Now, one thing about this, I mentioned, I mentioned the event we had a couple months ago, but probably nine to 10 months ago, I was in a meeting with, with a customer. As I, was, as I was explaining this, they said, I don't think we have a disconnect. I said, well, tell me how it works, because you, you don't have something like Signavio here or Lean IX, so how do you make it work? He said, well, when people have a change they want to make, they fill out a form, they attach it to an email, they route it to somebody who takes a look at it, digests it, determines who, need, who, who it needs to go to, and then it goes on to a list and somebody monitors that list and somebody rearranges the priorities. Then we have monthly conference calls and, and, and meetings where we all discuss the status and how's everything going. All right, and, and it seems to work pretty well. And I said, and so you know everything, right? He goes, well, not everything. You know, I, I'm, there's some things that aren't gonna come up in these meetings, but I still know about them. And I said, how do you know? He goes, because I'm in the loop. The loop. I've been in loops before. I know how loops work. I've also been out of the loop sometimes. I know about loops. I know that people have multiple loops. And depending on the politics, they might share something with that particular loop that they don't share with that loop. Or they think they know my loop, and so they share things that they think is relevant to me, but they don't share other things because they know it's irrelevant to me, even though I want to know about it. Loops are unreliable. All right, if I'm, if I'm, 
If I'm depending on human interaction, just, you know, not, nothing against humans here, I, I'm one, but if, if nothing against humans, but they can be fairly unreliable. There's emotions involved. They forget things. Loops go on vacation. They retire. They change departments. And that loop over there might be somebody else's loop too, but they don't share anything with them that they don't share with me or they do. So loops are unreliable. This last one down here, how can I make change easier for my organization? It isn't just about change, or excuse me, it isn't just about making things easier. It's also making change more effective within the organization. All right, once again, so that we know that we're making the right changes in the right places. And I'm not talking about word of mouth. You know, I, I look back to my own history prior to SAP where I actually worked in business process management. Why did we work on the things we worked on? Because somebody told us to. All right, we had no data. We had no data to support the fact that we need a new CRM application. But that's what we worked on because somebody said that's what we need. We had no data to support that decision or support any other decision. And was CRM the biggest priority we had? Our customer relationships the biggest priority we had in the company? I don't know. We didn't have any data to support that. So we did what we were told and we had nothing else. We're in a time now, that was a long time ago, we're in a time now where people can have this type of data and make data-driven decisions about these types of matters. So, two words I want to talk about a little bit today. Time is good. Visibility and structure. I wanna talk about structure first. You probably have somewhat of a structure right now in terms of how change is managed within your company, all right? Well, this, I have found that there are structures out there. Some people are, some companies are much more structured than others. It is an opportunity to revisit that. I find that events like this, events like this where you have a chance to leave the, your, your normal work office and come into a place like this gives you ideas about how we might be able to change. And I'm encouraging you to do that. I know that's where, when I'm in the audience of something like this, that my gears start turning. And you get, a, you get away from that daily thing where you're trying to enforce the processes you have already in place. Well, this is your opportunity to say, okay, let's, let's kind of start from scratch here. How could we make some changes here? And that's really what I'm, I'm trying to convey to you is that this is possibly the right way to say, let's restructure how we actually manage and orchestrate change within our company. So an opportunity to restructure that and do it in a much more effective manner. Visibility. I just shared my example of one of the last projects I worked on before I joined SAP, and that was in search of a new customer relationship management system, all right? Because we didn't have visibility of, of the effectiveness and the, and the efficiency of the systems that we already had in place. We didn't have that visibility. From an IT standpoint, if I don't have visibility of what's going on in the business, how effective can I be at making the proper changes, making sure that once again, I have limited resources to work on these things. How can I be sure that they're working on the right things? Word of mouth, because somebody told me, somebody, somebody who you know, kept me in the loop on what's important, somebody who was very biased and possibly said, I don't care what that manager over there says is important. This manager over here says, this is what we need to do, and he's my friend. So visibility and structure, two very key points here. This looks very much like a marketing slide, and it is. And I normally don't present marketing slides, but let me tell you why I left this one in here. That middle part there, the processes, the systems, the people, very important to bring those things together. No mystery there, motherhood, apple pie. I will say that there are three groups that I want to throw out there that is, is important. The IT group, I've talked about that. The business user community, very important. But I also want to mention this other group that's emerging, and I, and I, I alluded to it a few minutes ago, and I want to talk about it a little bit more. I brought this up and then I failed to make the point. Two years ago, when we, when we formed this organization within SAP for business process management, start talking with our customers. And do you have, you know, the question, do you have people who focus on change management? No, we don't. Or, or yeah, we, we hired somebody, but you know, we're, they're still getting up to speed. They don't have any tools. We hear about these things. Over the course of the last two years, like every passing month, Another company says, yes, we are forming a team right now within our company that is going to be the Lean Six Sigma team. They're going to be the continuous improvement team. They're going to be the process excellence team. These are the people who are focused on not just the IT aspects of things, but also the business thing. They're bridging that gap. These are people whose job it is to, to look at how do we improve the things that need improved today and how do they focus on what's going on in the future. So three different groups there I wanted to bring up which isn't even the key point of the slide. The key point of the slide is those things on the outside, fast time to insight, fast time to adapt. 
What does this mean? Okay, I don't have to wait for that monthly uh, cadence call to understand what's going on. Fast time to insight. I want to see it right now. Use data-driven digital tools to analyze what's going on in the company and show me right away. Show it to me on a daily basis what is going on. Basically a dashboard for your, for your business. How, how is the business actually running right now? How, fa how, how well are we processing sales orders? How well are we managing our inventory? How well are we, are we uh, getting new employees, training those employees and retaining those employees? All these things that are, are, are very much KPIs within an organization. But recognizing very quickly, in a very objective, quantitative manner, where are the issues? Where are the opportunities for improvement? And then secondly, now that I know what to focus on and what the biggest issues are in my company, what can I do about it? It isn't always launch a six or nine month project to take care of it. It's more like a process. And there are so many things that we can show you in, in Signavio that will say, here is a problem you should take a look at. We're going to help you find the root cause of that. And here are some potential solutions that you could put in place tomorrow if you want to. All right. Now, yes. Is that the situation? Every situation? Absolutely not. But if there are a lot of little opportunities that you aren't even aware of today that are opportunities for improvement and there's a quick fix for it, why not take it? All right. So, and by the way, fast time to insight, fast time to adapt. We're defining resiliency right there. The ability to very quickly identify where to, what to change and very quickly make that change defines resiliency for a company. All right, so a little bit about Signavio. Signavio can be broken up into two areas. At the highest level, at a very broad overview level, what are the capabilities of Signavio? First, there's no first, it's a continuous cycle, okay? But we're talking about process analysis and process management, okay? Why process analysis? Because once again, we want to use the the digital capabilities we have today to look at those systems and say, how, how are things really running today? How well are we doing? Okay, the, so we can identify where are the targets for our improvement activities. And then secondly, the business process management part of that where we define that this is how work is gonna happen within the company. I know that in my industry, I need to have 99% order fill with two day turnaround in order to remain competitive. Then I need to make sure that my business processes are capable of hitting 99% order fill with a two day turnaround. And if I'm not hitting that, what's the problem? Is it the people who are doing it? Is it the tools they have to use, the applications? Do they have inaccurate data? Let me diagnose where are those problems? All right, and that's where the an analysis comes back into play. So a couple of screenshot types of, of things. I am curious, how many in here come from uh, companies that are currently using SAP ERP? Okay, that's about what I expected. What you're looking at here on the screen is a, <clears throat> a Signavio application designed specifically for SAP ERP. Whether you're on ECC or S4 HANA, what this does, it connects and continuously monitors that ERP system and looks at how you're actually running the system. How are you actually processing transactions through your system and revealing to you where are the possible weaknesses or discrepancies or opportunities for improvement. It does this by, by doing thousand, a thousand, more than a thousand calculations on things and then comparing that to our industry database for benchmarking purposes to say, of these thousand things we're measuring, here are the 50 where you don't look like you're doing things very well. You might want to take a look at it. And then after that, of those 50 things, here's what we propose. Because we have hundreds of pre-built RPA bots, pre-built workflows, pre-built special applications that could possibly fix that right away. And let's not forget about the, the fact that it's also looking at ERP and saying, or you might just want to use some of the functionality that's in the ERP that maybe you didn't know about. It's also going to reveal that to you, okay? But that's what we're doing here is we're, we, are, we are looking for at the various processes that run through the system. You hook this up, it's running. And by the way, it's a one day implementation on this. You, use it, you put it in place today, by tomorrow, you're getting the, the analytics on how your system is running and the recommendations as well. But what this is doing is based upon those process flows in your system, you can select which ones you want and take a look how well are you doing and look, look how you're doing compared to your, your peers, your industry peers. And once again, then making those recommendations on what, can you, what would we suggest you do about that? Okay, however, as I mentioned before, not everybody is only on SAP systems. A lot of our customers are on SAP and non-SAP applications and that's okay too. Because we also have deep 
process mining, true process mining here that is interested only in your end-to-end -end processes, regardless of whether it's SAP, non-SAP, or cross multiple systems. It's going to look at that and give people like yourselves the visibility, the visibility of how well is this process running. If any of you have seen these types of diagrams before, in a nutshell, what this is doing is saying of all the transactions actually running through your system, and I want to, I want to emphasize that. This isn't just about how do you think the system is running or how do you want the system to run, what is actually happening based upon the transaction logs within your software. It's gonna come back and say, yes, for this particular process, that bold line, this is where most things go and typically that is going to be the, the, the desired process. But all of these other lines here are showing you these are process variations. These are things that are not following the standard process. And as a process manager, I wanna know that. If we say this is, Getting back to my, my, the, uh, the point I made a few minutes ago, if I know that I have to have that two-day uh, two turnaround 99% order fill, and I've defined that this process is what's gonna get us there, but people aren't following it, then I've got a problem, and I need to know why that's happening. I need to understand that it's happening, and I need to be able to do a root cause analysis to determine why is this happening so that I can make corrections. Maybe I need to change my standard process, but nonetheless, I need to know about that. So that is what we're talking about here in, from a process analysis standpoint, understanding what's really going on so I know that I'm focusing on the right things. And then being able to also then establish those processes. This is the way we're going, to, this is the way we're going to schedule production. This is the way we are going to process sales orders. This is how we're going to process uh, ac uh, acquisitions of, of new capital equipment. This is how we're going to do everything. We can define this industrial grade business process management, because this is my, central repository of every process within my entire company. This gets back to that idea of a structured approach to change management for my company. I have a central database where I keep all of my processes. This is also a collaborative environment so that people, not just a few, uh, you know, a handful of people who have access to creating models can go in and make models, but all those other people impacted by these processes so they can review what is being proposed as a new process and contribute. This one, we tried that five years ago. It doesn't work, we, and this is what went wrong. Ah, good to know, okay? Or give me a reason this doesn't work. People have the opportunity. I do wanna talk about a little bit about a move from ECC to S4 HANA or any move to an, uh, to an ERP system. If I can bring the user, the user community together, let's say six months before that implementation, and say, look, we know we're gonna be moving from this system to this system, and 90% of what we do is gonna be identical to what we've done in the old system. But that other 10% is opportunity to make improvements. An ERP implementation is a terrible thing to waste. I hear about companies doing technical upgrades and lift and shift and that type of thing. I have never taught, in my 19 plus years at SAP, I've never heard one customer say, if we could reconfigure our ERP system, we'd do it exactly the same. Because we have, it's been great for all these years. No, everybody has a few things they wish, that if they would have known it back then, they would have made a change. This is that opportunity to make those changes, all right? So let's bring together the right people, six months or whatever that duration is, phase zero of your implementation, bring them together and let them design what those new systems are going to look like. How should they act? What are they going to do? Why are they better than what we had in the past? And that, provide, that provides the guidance then for the people who are then configuring the software later on. So they know what that new system needs to look like. Okay, so in an, in, to net this out, what we're talking about here is the fact that over here in the yellow area we have what, and by the way, this is a, 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 a directional thing. We're, talk, we're talking about transformation. I don't like to use the word transformation, it's a change. You know, sometimes they're really big changes, sometimes they're really small changes. But from a business standpoint, we're talking about people who are focused on what are the people doing and what are the processes they're using. And if they're doing that, once we define that, it leads to some, some requirements in terms of capabilities and data. And you could look at it, and I know this isn't a, fir a, a firm way that in every company doesn't work exactly the same way, but from an enterprise architect architecture standpoint, we're talking about what are the capabilities required to enable this and the data requirements, and therefore what applications and technology do we need to support these processes? And what we're talking about here is the ability to take both the work being done from, a man, man, from an enterprise architecture management standpoint and the business process management standpoint and combine those together. So people, 
These people have visibility of what's going on down here, even though this is directional. These people have visibility of what's going on down here. And more importantly for this conversation today, these people have visibility of what's going on over here. Not only in terms of what the plans are, but what is actually happening within the business. So I know I'm focusing on the right stuff. Our forefathers, the inventors of Lean IX and Signavio, recognized this years ago that there, there was this, this synergistic effect of having the two capabilities together. They, they created that handoff. They created those handshakes. They created, you know, I'm not technical, they created the, the interaction between these systems so that people like yourselves could have that complete visibility of what's going on from a, from a change management standpoint. A quote here from one of our own enterprise architects within SAP, because SAP also uses Lean IX to manage our enterprise architecture and Signavio to manage our business processes. So I'm not going to read it to you. I think you can handle that. So, so I think that the, the, the whole point here is, once again, recognizing the fact that maybe today you have what's, which, which is something that's kind of working in terms of interacting between the IT organization and the, and the user community. However, this might afford you a much more streamlined approach to it, something much more effective, much more efficient for keeping those two organizations in sync with one another in terms of structure as well as visibility of what's going on. And that's really what we're talking about here is providing visibility to people so they can make better decisions. Today at 1.30, I will be doing a short session to get a little bit more depth into what Signavio is about and how it works. We also have um, my, my, my friend and colleague Larry at our demo booth out here, demo pod or whatever. If you have questions and you'd like to see the product, he can guide you through that. He's very experienced with this. In the meantime, I want to say thank you to the Lean IX people for this opportunity to, to talk with you today. And I certainly appreciate the time that you've all given me and you've been very, very focused and attentive. And even though I got these bright lights, I can still see people in the audience kind of looking at me and not necessarily looking at their phones, Paul. So thank you for your time. Have a great conference. We'll see you all day today, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Chet. I'll take that. Oh, thank you so much. I, I do have a question for you if you've got time. So. Uh, yeah, yeah sure. okay. A lot of us want to know what happened to the bird at the beginning of the uh, presentation, but we don't know, right? I, I don't know. He just had to get across town. Big plans. Yeah, there was a flap. I didn't know if it was trying to get across town or if this was the, the flight of shame from a rough night. <laughs> oh, it could have been. Yeah. Could have been like, I was in that nest way too late. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> a lot of what you shared mm -hmm. for us to harness the opportunity does require a degree of change change across not just what we do, but across an organization. Do you, how close are we as a, as a community, as an industry, to be able to just embrace those changes and get it done? Because change is hard. You know, the, the, the funny thing that, I, that I've been experiencing out there is, you know, when we talk about business processes, receiving of material on the receiving dock, production scheduling, all these things, all these things are processes. And when I talk with IT people, they're like, yeah, those, those business users, they just don't want to change. Right. However, what we're talking about here today is the, your process for managing processes. You're, so in, in you talk to those people like, oh, no, no, yeah, you're right. Everybody needs to change, but, but not me. They yeah, need to, I, to change into the way I do it. Right. But, I, but I, see that, I, I, I see that changing uh, from the standpoint of companies saying, yes, we need to make some, some, some changes here. There's so many things that we talked about today in this session that a few years ago were not possible to do because digitally it just wasn't capable yet. And now we have that ability and I think, it's, I think people are starting to catch on that there are some new ways to think through these things. Love it. Chet, once again, thank you very much.